Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So, sorry about that. The setup video was a little bit of a beam. Obviously, there's a little bit more to set on these guys up. But I didn't want to bore you with like half an hour of setup videos, right? Uh, because we've got an interesting topic today. And that is the difference between a single telescope and a binocular telescope. For those of you that are familiar, my name is Vlad. I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing for more cool content like this. Um, but anyhow, yeah, so overall I've had over 100 scopes, like way more accessories than I can count. So, you know, I'm kind of an astro nerd. Uh, lately I've been getting into bino scopes. I decided to make a video about it. I mean, they are becoming more popular, especially with the APM bino, these APM bino scopes. Um, uh, but the, you know, the market does have a few of these even bigger dobs. So yeah, let's kind of take a look at the equipment that we've got going on. And then I'll share you some of my thoughts and experiences on using these guys versus using a single telescope. All right, the fun part of the video, looking at the equipment. So what do we got going on here? Um, this guy you guys might be familiar with, especially if you're kind of thinking about a binoscope. This is the APM 100 uh, millimeter ED bino. Uh, they make them in various sizes. I think they make them from like 82 millimeters to 150 these days. Um, they make them in a 45 degree inch version, which you know this is what it is, and then they make them in a 90 degree as well. Um, so this guy is mounted on an Iaptron Go 2 Altaz mount, a uh, very cool mount actually for this type of scope, works really well, especially with this you know whole pure extension. Um, and then this guy, this is kind of a special treat, uh, <laughs> never figure I'd uh, own one of these, but one of these came up uh, semi-locally, I had to drive like 10 hours to get this thing, which was well worth it. 16 inch JMI binoscope, so essentially, I mean, what this is, is two 16 inch daubs that are like you know connected to work together you know what i mean so essentially it's you know about as huge of a binocular as uh, anybody would care to own right <laughs> um so anyhow yeah let me put the uh, camera back on the tripod here and you know i'll we'll kind of talk about um essentially you know what the differences are in the views between using a single scope and a binocular telescope, some of the advantages and disadvantages between you know the two approaches essentially. Alright, let's get down to business. Let's take the cool shades off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, um so I'm not gonna challenge your guys' intellectual abilities. Uh, if you're curious about the specs of these scopes, you know, I know you guys could go on Google and you know look up all the specs and that type of deals of the scope, so I'm not really gonna cover that. What I want to cover is, you know, chances are if you're thinking about getting a binoscope or if you're just curious about the topic, like, you know, what's the difference, the real world difference of using these compared to a single telescope of a similar size or maybe like a different size and that type of deal. So let's kind of get into that. All right, so let's start with the basics. Like, why the heck would you even want to do a binoscope compared to a single telescope? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's no secret, you know, we do have two eyes, or at least most of us anyway, right? So our, um, our brain and, you know, our whole, you know, kind of like physiology, it's made to see things with two eyes. Now, we can see stuff, you know, fairly well with one eye too, but really we, we're just kind of pre-programmed to see more with two eyes. So anytime you're observing with two eyes, you're actually going to see more detail, whether that's with using a bino viewer or an actual binoscope and an actual binoscope is even better than the bino viewer because the way that a bino viewer works is it'll take the light from a single telescope and split it essentially to whereas here you you know you physically have essentially you know two telescopes connected right okay so kind of with that basic description out of the way so you know in the real world i guess like you know what can you expect to see better or you know like what not with the binoscope compared to the single scope um, well, I'll start with probably the most common um, thing that people get, let's say, a bino viewer for, uh, which also applies with the binoscope. It's usually for the planets and the moon. Um, you know, whether it's using a binoscope or using a bino viewer, um, I always see almost, I'd say like 90, probably 5% of the time, I see more detail when I'm using two eyes. 
Um, just all of that really low surface contrast detail, let's say like on Jupiter and Saturn um, and on Mars when it's you know, in opposition. Um, it just really kind of pops into view a lot easier when you're using two eyes versus one eye. So that's probably the biggest, you know, like kind of um, thing that, you know, most people get a binoscope for. However, though, um, that's kind of more true for binoculars, again, with, or with, with the uh, bino viewer. Uh, because they split the layer. A lot of people don't use them for deep sky uh, because they do dumb down the image. Um, this actually kind of segues into what's actually kind of cool about a true binoscope. Uh, so I, f you know, I forget where I read this or learned this from. Um, so this isn't like something that I'm inventing or anything like that. Um, I, I, uh, I believe that people say, uh, smarter people than me, uh, say <laughs> that having a binoscope uh, essentially gives you like 1.2 or 1.3 times the aperture uh, of what your scope you know actually is so like in the case of the 16 inch uh, daub right that's a binoscope it'll be equivalent to about a you know single 20 inch daub on deep sky objects um, now I'll kind of segue into I guess you know like talking about deep sky a little bit like is that rule true well you know, it's kind of interesting because on some objects, you know, like when I, I, I've, I've actually owned a premium 16 inch dub, you know, like a single one, and I've owned a, you know, pretty darn good uh, 18 inch dub. So, you know, I have a pretty good, you know, experience with, you know, what uh, this type scope should show in a single telescope, right? Um, and, you know, on, on some objects, I would say that really the view isn't too much better with this bino scope compared to a single, you know, premium dub, kind of weirdly, you know. Some objects though, like one that really kind of comes to mind is uh, M76, that's like the little dumbbell nebula. Um, you know, and most scopes that I've seen it in, actually I should say in all scopes that I've seen it, you know, like you'll see the little dumbbell shape, right, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, I don't think even with my 18 inch, I saw like that whole second outer envelope, right, and this scope just shows it, you know, clear as day. It's an, an amazing difference, really. So that's one, you know, example to where I would say that there's a clear benefit with using the binoscope. And there's, you know, there's, a, you know, uh, an array of other objects that the binoscope really does portray a lot better. Okay, and then uh, kind of talking more about deep sky, we'll kind of um, touch on with the APM here. Uh, you know, it's a four-inch scope, right? So it's two, you know, four-inch ED refractors, essentially, right? Um, now, I've not used this thing from a uh, light polluted sky, so I can't really speak, you know, how it'd work here. Like, you know, where I live out here, we have a semi-dark sky. Like, it's not, you know, completely dark, but it's pretty dark, though. I'm darker than most, you know, folks, you know, enjoy. So I'm pretty lucky in that respect. Um, and yeah, this thing, like, I'd say it shows an image that's, like, you know, kind of more equivalent to where I'd expect to see from, like, an 8 to a 10 in scope. That's not to say that, you know, if I had them side by side, you know, set up that, like, a 10 in scope wouldn't beat this thing out. It probably would. I mean, I don't know, like, I, I haven't actually set it up to kind of do the comparison. But man, I am, I'm like blown away by how nice, nice of an image this thing shows on a lot of nebulas, a lot of star clusters. I mean, the contrast is just really great. So, um, like in this case, using the two eyes, I mean, it really does help to bring out that extra detail. So that's really awesome. All right, so at this point, you're probably thinking, well, hey, Vlad's a fanboy. He likes his binoscopes. You know, it can be good for everything, right? Uh, yeah, it'd be kind of true. Um, so, well, not true that I'm a total, you know, Binoscope fanboy, but you're true that it's not, uh, they're not better for everything. You know, weirdly enough, um, pretty much like with, uh, whether it be a Bino viewer or a Binoscope, I really do prefer how double stars and actually single colorful stars look better through like, let's say, a, you know, a single refractor, especially a nice APO. Um, I don't know what the difference is. I'm not sure if you just don't get like a, quite a perfect merge in the images or well with the binoscope, but I always have preferred the view of, you know, specifically stars, really, whether it be a double star, like, you know, a single colorful star or something like that. Uh, yeah, they are actually, you know, strangely kind of like, I'd say almost always better with the single telescope. All right, to kind of, you know, conclude like that whole section on, you know, like visually, like just observing through them. I mean, again, with the exception of double stars and like, you know, colorful singles, um, really a binoscope's better for anything.
I would say. Um, if you're kind of thinking more of like a Bina viewer, um, the, the difference is kind of more murkier. So for, for with the Bina viewer, depending on the type of scope you have, it's usually better for the planets and the moon. Um, and you know maybe some of the brighter deep sky objects, unless you have a really big dog, then they're actually pretty good on most deep sky objects. Besides like the really dim, like you know fuzzy galaxies kind of type of deal. All right, so we you know we kind of covered like I guess you know the pros essentially with the visual section of the binoscope, right? It shows you more detail just in general than you know like a single scope would. So what are some of the disadvantages generally speaking? Well, you know, one of the biggest disadvantages, of course, is that instead of having one eyepiece, you have to buy two of each eyepiece. So that's, you know, obviously a lot more costly. Um, as you saw with, you know, especially the 16-inch scope, I mean, you know, obviously, instead of one 16-inch tube, you have two of them, so it's a lot bulkier. I mean, generally, they're more expensive. So, you know, to kind of, like, sum it up, the expense factor, that's definitely a major one. I mean, just in general, the whole package is more expensive. The scope's more expensive. You know, you have to buy two of every eyepiece. Chances are the mount's going to be more expensive if it does need its own mount. Um, so those are kind of like the big, you know, disadvantages. Um, if you know, if we're talking about more of an advanced scope like this one, there is a little bit of another disadvantage too. So those tubes, right? They have to be perfectly, you know, aligned with each other so that you merge the image. When you see, you don't see like two stars, you know, kind of offset. You see one star that's kind of merged, right? Um, and that, you know, with a big scope like that, that does require some fiddling. There's extra motors that will, you know, help you align those tubes. That's kind of specific to that scope. You don't really, you know, you don't have to do that on these APMs. They come, you know, pre-calibrated pre from the factory. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys found this topic interesting. I thought I'd just throw this video together real quick because, you know, as you can see, it's a beautiful evening today. It should be a clear night doing some deep sky observing tonight. I uh, figured, you know, I'd kind of talk a little bit about the binoscope deal. You know, unfortunately with these guys, obviously, you know, I can't share the view that I'm getting through them, you know, th through a video. I mean, if you were here, you could obviously take a look at them. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, like specific questions, like if you're considering a binoscope and you're just kind of not sure, like, you know, if, like if you just want to ask, you know, some specifics, feel free to leave me a comment up then below. I'll be happy, you know, to kind of try to steer in the right direction. Again, if you're not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.